Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Now this is a little bit late this month, this came out last Wednesday so about a week ago now but I've been quite poorly with a cold so I've not been able to do any reviews or anything. Um, so sorry that this is late and sorry if you can still hear the remnants of the cough and cold in my voice but I really wanted to get this review out there um, as soon as possible really because it is a Halloween special and there's only a limited amount of time now um, where people might want to colour Halloween things before the actual event. So here we go, the Colouring Heaven Halloween special for October 2018. So usually in Colouring Heaven we have one or maybe two artists that are featured in each edition, usually it's one. This particular one has four different artists split into two categories. So we've got 40 unearthly designs all together, so the same amount of designs. But the first two illustrators, Molly Harrison and Selena Fennec, are spooky cuteness. So that's the category. So it's cute and scary. It's not gory. Then we've got creepy darkness from Lisa Mitrokin and Ennis Guerrero. I hope I'm saying that right. And this is the more creepy kind of macabre side of the Halloween. So I think Jenny, the creative director of Colouring Heaven, has really tried to put something for everyone in here because I know that not everybody likes the really creepy, scary illustrations. And But then again, some people really want that. So th there's something for everyone in this one. As usual, you can colour the front and the back if you want to. And we do have the beautiful gold foiling. Always have to feature that. So here we go. We have our introductions about all four of this month's featured artists. And I'll just read a little bit about each. So Molly Harrison, she lives in Northern California. She has a BA in illustration and her inspirations come from nature, emotions and other art. And she does have many, many colouring books. So you've probably heard of her before and you've definitely heard of Selena Fennec. She lives in Sydney, Australia, and her illustrations usually feature goddesses, fairies and enchanted creatures. Again, she's got loads of colouring books and pages out already. We've got Lisa Mitro Mitrokin or Mitrokin. I did used to know how to say this because Lisa told me herself and I've totally forgot. Um, sorry, Lisa. So these are the more creepier side of the Halloween illustrations. Um, she used to be a tattoo artist, so she's really sort of talented in creating intricate designs um, that do, do have a sort of a tattooish look about them. And um, she's also into taxidermy, so lots of different creepy sort of influences coming in from that kind of sense. Um, there's a lot of things like animal skulls and stuff that feature in her work, so she gets inspiration from that. And then we've got Ennis Guerrero, who I haven't heard of before. Um, she's a Venezuelan artist and she is inspired particularly by the Renaissance and Victorian periods in history and also magic and mytholo mythological creatures. She studied as a graphic designer and she is influenced by the Gothic world, Romanticism and tragedy. So we've got those two completely different groups of, of scary Halloween kind of illustrations there. So moving on to the very first illustration, we have Molly Harrison first. She is designs one to ten. So here's the first one. We've got this witch in a field surrounded by pumpkins and a scarecrow. So again, it is kind of creepy, but it's not sort of gory or bloody or anything like that. That one is called Mystic Duo, I think. Or is this one? Oh, this one's Mystic Duo. So we always go from the left to the right with the title. So this is Mystic Duo. Uh, we've got a witch and her cat. This is Ethereal Temptress. So a bit of a vampiress girl here. She's got her cape on, her teeth, a candle in the background and the kind of funny, funny kind of brickwork pattern in the background, kind of. There's lots of things you could do with that one. This is the Enchantress. So again, Molly Harrison's work, very cute, but it does also have a lot of blank spaces. So there's not too much detail in her work, which is great for those maybe with eyesight problems or hand function problems who want a bit of an open space and not too much intricacy. So we have Beloved Chiroptera. Chiroptera? Not sure if that's how you say that. Uh, again, it looks a little bit like a vampire. We've got bats in the background and a few trees. 
we've got Enchanted Twilight, another witch with her two cats. So again, big wide open spaces. You've got a big moon here to colour in. You could maybe draw in some craters and do a bit of a night sky, practice your blends. Nocturnal Companions. So here we've got the witch again with her little owl friend. In the background, it looks as if we are in a graveyard. What I find funny about that is uh, there's a moon here and a moon here, but I think that this moon might be attached to her hat, actually, so I'm looking at that wrong. Uh, Necromancer, which is, I think, like a witch that brings people back from the dead, I'm not sure. Uh, we have this really cool crescent moon that's actually upended, and she has a staff here that's topped with a jack-o'-lantern. Mystic Autumn. This one has a border on it. So it's the witch again that's featuring quite a lot in Molly's work. We've got the cat, the pumpkin and some trees, but this time we have this big rectangular border which features some autumn leaves. Companions, we've got the witch and her owl again. And I really like this one, it's so cute. This is called Electricity and we've moved on to Selena Fennec's work now. This is the first of Selena's work. And we have um, Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein with their brains in a jar, or, well that's one brain isn't it really, a brain in a jar and uh, the coffin behind them or, oh hang on no it's the table. I should look at these properly really before. <laughs> I thought I did, but um, obviously not. So this is the table because it's got the electricity here. So this is where they've just risen up from the dead and we've got all this crackling electricity around them. Really like that one. Fading away. So we've got a ghost girl here. She's sort of surrounded by a bubble, a spherical shape here and different ghosts rising up from this sort of silhouette um, graveyard. The Chain of Skulls, so we're getting a little bit more detailed now. We've got a girl with a sugar skull face and a beautiful kind of rough style dress and she's obviously knelt or sat down on her knees because you can see her feet here and we've got a few paisley illustrations coming out. This is Little Demon and as you can see it's one that I've coloured. I did it while I was on my deathbed, very apt. <laughs> so you can see that I've coloured her here in the usual devil colours, so orangey red skin. Um, I decided to be quite limited on the palette. I didn't want to chuck everything at it because that's what I always do and it just looks a bit like a rainbow is thrown up on the page. So I tried to keep it limited. We've got purple and kind of very deep ultramarine blue um, for the wings and the dress. We obviously have the skin and then it sort of goes into a bit of brown here on the, the legs and the hoof, the hoofs, hooves. Um, and brown within the wings as well and then I just did her hair like a greyish black and of course the moon behind very plain and simple but really striking I feel did that with Prismacolors by the way this is Headless Horsewoman so um, we have I've just got a little bit of print on there I think I probably uh, pressed too hard around this area I need a big rubber you know I've I've, I've uh, seemed to have mislaid all of my rubbers. I think my kids seem to keep taking them, but you can erase any ink that like imprints itself onto the illustration. So you can erase it. Anyway, this is Headless Horsewoman, Selena Fennec. You can see that this lady here is carrying her, ho her own head and she's sat atop her horse, which has flames coming out of its mane and its hooves. Really nice one, that one. Nice night for flying. So we've got a witch on her broomstick in front of the moon, very bewitched looking, and a couple of owls following. Night's Companions. This is a vampire girl. She has the teeth, she has her corset and her cloak, very gothic, and she sat on top of a castle turret with her little pet dragon. This is called Witching Hour, and we've got a girl here that looks very ethereal. She's got no pupils in her eyes, She's got this kind of raggedy, broken, ripped dress. She looks very ghost-like. I believe she's, she's floating above here because I can't see any feet. So I do believe this is a ghost. And we have this village background scene. Very simple, not too detailed. Spell of threes we have here. So we've got three cats, three little kittens, and this little, what I would think is a white witch, sat on top of a grave um, with some candles, obviously doing some sort of spell, but she doesn't look evil, she looks very sweet, so a white witch, I'm saying. 
And the last of Selena's illustrations for this book is called Wolf Pack. We've got the girl here surrounded by her two wolf friends on the edge of a cliff in front of the moon, howling away. And the best thing about this illustration is the girl is actually part wolf. So you can see she's either changing into the wolf or this is just a hybrid of a human and a wolf. She has the ears, she has the face, she also has the legs and the arms, but she still has her hair and her clothes on. So kind of a hybrid there. Now we move on to Lisa's illustrations. This really fought for first place when I was deciding which one to colour out of this book. Um, I really, really love this one. It's a fortune teller, very traditional kind of gypsy-esque fortune teller. We have the animal skulls here. She's looking into her crystal ball. And the thing that really like balanced it the other way for the Selena Fennec illustration was just that because I was so poorly, I didn't want to get into doing light sources. And I think this page really deserves to have some sort of glowing light on her face and her fingertips here because she's looking into this glowing crystal ball. But I absolutely adore this illustration and it is definitely one that I'm going to be colouring in the future. This is Harlequin. So you can see this girl is wearing a rather creepy looking mask that has three different faces on it. It has the usual jester's kind of triple hat going on and she has a beautiful corset that's ripped and um, ragged sort of all over the place. We then have the Count, which is obviously the vampire, the Dracula character, holding on to his latest victim who has a couple of bites in her neck. He has these horrible claws, but he is very good looking, very seductive as Dracula usually is. This is surrounded by a little kind of um, very vintage looking border with some fleur-de-lis illustrations. The Queen of Spades is a take on the Queen card of spades and you can see here that we have the beautiful Queen, we have a raven here, we have the spade and the Q sign and some roses but then you turn it over and the Queen has suddenly become this horrible dead zombie looking kind of skeletal figure and again the raven is it doesn't even have an eye on this one so no eye um, so it's like a very very much a, a day and night a dark and light illustration that you can do there very interesting I think I'll be doing that one as well very shortly this is the ace of diamonds another card and uh, you can see here we've got a skeleton and he looks like he's sort of praying on his knees to this clown like figure I don't really know why um, but it's it's creepy it's very very creepy we have Betty's Halloween. Not sure who Betty is, <laughs> but she seems to be this character in the center of these horrible creatures around her. She's holding a book, Halloween and Spook Stories. And these characters, we've got this dead kind of creature with roses all around him on a crown. We've got a mummy. We've got again, another dead kind of looking girl, a zombie. We have a terrible looking creature here. Um, sort of stretching his face wide awful and she sat on top of a pumpkin so yeah really really spooky one that one this is a little bit nicer this is cathedral cats so we've got a couple of Siamese looking cats here that are decorated in a kind of paisley fleur-de-lis way and they are in front of this mandala stained glass spherical uh, piece here so you could do that as stained glass if you wanted to that'd look quite nice Obviously, with it being cathedral, that's why. Uh, Bloody Mary. So this is a skeletal looking woman or a woman who is wearing skeletal makeup for Halloween and a sugar skull makeup as well. Got a couple of sugar skulls in her hair and again, the roses. She's wearing this kind of halo crown, um, which gives a kind of religious connotation to it that the... Um, Mary and Joseph kind of thing but um, I don't know whether that's what Lisa intended but you do have a bit of a, a creepy spin on a religious iconography there. This is Sugar Skull Love. So a couple of skeletons getting married. We've got the, the dead bride here, the corpse bride. She has her horrible rib cage just sat up there and he's got a rather funky looking uh, Jack Skellington top and jacket going on there he's got his bow tie he's got his very nice moustache he's done his hair for the day uh very cute even though it's not cute it's still cute <laughs> this is lisa's final page this is called final whisper 
and we have what looks again like a kind of a gypsy lady um, who is praying it, it seems with rosary beads or pearls or something it looks as if she's praying and she has this this figure looming over her so it seems to be her final moments before death comes to get her very creepy now we move on to the fourth and final illustrator in this book this is Ennis Guerrero and the first illustration is called Button Eyes so if you've seen the child's film I say child's film it's very creepy called Coraline you will know that the evil mother, the other mother in Coraline, likes to sew buttons onto children's eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where I think maybe the, the inspiration has come from here. But this is kind of a grayscale look on uh, Ennis's illustrations. It's, it's grayscale partly, but not fully. So you can see there is a lot of shading going on. We've got one here that I can't pronounce, so I'm not sure what that means. I'll have to look, but... This lady has horns growing from her head and branches growing from her back. This one's called Requiem. Again, it's very grayscale, this one. You can see that she's playing her cello here, I think. And we have a key hanging down from her hands and also a rose. She has an animal skull here, a candle. There's lots of different elements of this. You can see we have like a the spine of some kind of creature going around her like a wreath. Very, very interesting. All these styles are so completely different. It's very, very um, much a variety book. It's so diverse, this one. This is called The Grey Witch. So obviously we have a witch here. There's a birdcage in the background, some toadstools, a pumpkin, and she is wearing again that key. I'm not sure why that key keeps appearing. Um, and a beautiful hat with lots of ivy and flowers, so a very natural kind of witch. This is called Give Me My Wings, and it's the, um, the first and maybe only illustration that is orientated landscape. And this little girl, very, very cute, sweet girl, is holding on to her little doll, who again has the buttons for eyes, and she is uh, also accompanied by these beautiful feathered wings. Again, I cannot pronounce the name of this illustration, but it's very, very nice, very similar to the first. She's holding that key. We have feathers coming down, lots of big roses on her crown. She has the sugar skull makeup. And yeah, that's all you can really say about that one. This is called Famine. So we have a very bedraggled, very thin skeletal looking girl here with her skeletal dead horse. Oh, unicorn, it's got a horn here, so it must be a unicorn. Um, but I have a feeling that these are not, these creatures are not alive. So it'd be very nice to experiment with a kind of dead skin colour palette here. And we've also got a little bit of architecture in the background as well. We have is an army. I'm not sure what that means. Again, we have a button-eyed girl. She has moths in her crown and also animal skulls. Um, I'm not sure if these are hairpins or scissors poking out of her hair. I'm not sure. She's just got a skull here and lots of thorns and again moths and she's holding what looks like the back of a pocket watch. I think these illustrations, particularly Ennis's, are very, very open to interpretation. So different people are going to see different things. This is Artemisa. Well, I know that Artemis is the goddess of the hunt in Greek mythology, and she here has a spear, and she seems to be sat astride a wolf, or at least that's how the, the composition of the piece is made up. She has, her, she has a heart here on her chest. She's got antlers and leaves all th flowing through her hair. Very, very kind of intricate and detailed. And this one, the final illustration in the book, is called Season of the Witch. I think this is my favourite of Ennis's. It's got just the right amount of shading. I think it's not too dark. And um, we have the cauldron bubbling. We've got animal skulls again, pumpkins, uh, bit different potions and lotions. There's a big crystal here and what looks like a spell book. She's got lots of different um, symbols on her belt. Uh, lots of crystals as well. Her tights are all ripped 
and she just looks really sassy and like a very modern witch so I really really like that one and we have come to the end now you can see here on the advertisement page that when you subscribe to Colouring Heaven you get free colouring pencils the Faber-Castell Gold Faber pencils and this is a Christmas gift subscription offer so you um, sign up to subscribe to either um, six months I think it is six months or 12 months of receiving Colouring Heaven every month through the door and you will get a little present for Christmas so all of the subscription details are going to be in the, in the description below and also where you can buy this individual uh, book you can get it from supermarkets if you live in the UK but you can also buy it online again check the description for details paper as usual is really good quality it's not the best but it is thick enough to use markers just make sure that nothing bleeds through through excuse me by putting some paper behind <clears throat> so I hope that you have enjoyed my Halloween um, special review I hope I've not croaked too much all the way through please let me know what you think in the comments and do like this video I'll see you next time thank you for watching uh, see you on colour with Claire <laughs>